Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Spring Boot 101. Today we are going to discuss about REST controllers. In the previous episode, we built a simple web application that showed us a greeting each time we navigated to HTTP localhost 8080 slash hello. Today we are going to add a, a model for our application, a hotel booking model, and we are going to create a different REST controller that will handle um, the retrieval of data, filtering of data, creation of new hotel bookings, and uh, so on and so forth. So we are going to get a little more into detail with it. But before we do that, uh, let's take a couple of minutes and discuss a little about REST and REST controllers in Spring Framework. So what is REST? Simply put, REST is an architectural style. It is definitely not a protocol. It is an architectural style that describes how two systems can share state or communicate with one another. In order for two systems to share state, they need to re represent it using a common format, it's like such as JSON or XML. In the case of web applications, the most um, used protocol is HTTP. So to sum it up, in practice, we use REST to create web applications that expose an HTTP API. In Spring, uh, we can achieve this with a REST controller. We also have another annotation that is just at controller. So what is the difference between the two of them? We use a controller uh, in Spring terminology to return a model and a view back to the client. So the client will get uh, an HTTP page uh, that has been processed by Spring. When we use a REST controller, we basically send back to the client an object that is represented uh, in uh, JSON or XML, mostly in JSON if you talk about web applications. So, the con so when, we use, we, when we annotate uh, a class with controller, uh, that will basically instruct that method um, to, to search for a, a, a view, it can be a GSP view, to bind it to a, to, to, to a model that we have on a server and to send back the response to the, to the client. When we use REST controller, which by the way is just a syntactic sugar that combines the controller interface with the response body interface, we instruct Spring to take uh, the output of that method to represent it as, as XML or JSON and to put it in the actual body of the HTTP response itself. Okay, uh, we'll see it in practice anyway. So the, the, that's it for the slides. Let's go um, to coding because it's a lot more fun. First, let's create our model. So in our case, it's a hotel booking. Okay, so for our hotel booking, we'll probably need the hotel name. Okay, we'll probably need the price per night. And we'll probably need the number of nights that will stay there. Uh, let's also add a constructor to make things easy. So it's hotel name, price per night, and number of nights. Okay, let's bind this constructor parameters to fields. Okay. And now let's add the getters for hotel name. And we'll add one final method in here, which is get total price and this is the price per night multiplied by the number of nights okay I'll just close this okay so this is our model pretty simple pretty obvious okay now let's add a um, different controller that will manage for our hotel bookings we'll call it booking controller it's going to be a REST controller, 
Okay, so it's not going to return a view, it's going to return a list of objects or something like this. Okay, uh, because we are not using a database yet, we'll have to use our hotel bookings in memory. So we're just going to create a list of hotel bookings. And within the constructor, we are going to initialize this. Bookings array list, okay. And now let's add some hotel bookings. New hotel booking, Marriott, expensive. Let's stay here for a few nights. Um, okay, Ibis. Oh, this one is more. This one is more affordable. We we'll stay here for four nights. Oops, have an extra thing in here. Okay, and finally. Uh, let's say um, Love Hotel and we're going to stay here for just one night. Okay, now that we have our in-memory list, let us create a method that will re retrieve all the bookings that we have here. The method, it will return a list of Hotel bookings, get all, okay, return bookings, okay, and we need two more things actually, because I forgot about them, we need a request mapping of slash all, and here for the controller itself, we'll add a request mapping of um, bookings. And actually in here, just to make things more clear, we can say, okay, so that the request mapping is book slash bookings slash all. And then the method, we're going to use get in order to, to retrieve the hotel bookings. Now by default, get is the method that is being used. So this line of code here, method equals request method dot get is, uh, is optional, it's not necessary. But personally, I prefer to to write them because it makes things it, it makes things more obvious. Okay, let's test what we've done. We'll fire up our Spring Boot application. This controller will be automatically re registered, and then we'll use our browser to see if things are working. Okay, it's on. So localhost 8080 slash bookings slash all. And we should get, and there it is. This is our list of, of bookings, of hotel bookings. Cool, so everything is working. Okay, we'll stop this. Now let's add a filter, okay? Suppose I want to get all the hotels where the price is uh, less than a given value. So I'm interested in offers that are affordable to me. I will create another method that will still return hotel bookings. Uh, let's call it get affordable. And in get affordable, we'll use a path variable. Okay. Okay. And here we'll add our Request mapping value is um, affordable, affordable, okay, and the price is here, and the method is get. And we're going to return bookings, we're going to create a stream, and we'll add a filter so get price per night is less or equal than the price that is given to by the user and we'll collect all these results okay awesome so the user will go to uh, localhost 8080 bookings affordable and then let's say he's going to give a price of 100 in this case 
uh, this method should return only the hotel bookings where the price per night is less than less or equal to 100 so let's see it in action actually yeah let, let's see it in action Okay, the demo started. So if you go to localhost eighty slash bookings slash all, like we did before, we get all the hotels. And let's say I'm interested in hotels where the price per night is less than 100 bucks. So I should go affordable and 100 bucks. And in this case, I'm only getting IBIS. Okay, if I put 200 bucks, then I get IBIS and a hotel. And if I put 300 bucks per night, I should get, again, I have all my hotels. So cool, this is also working. Now, uh, this is a path variable. So when we see here that the request mapping is affordable and then we use this, basically whatever we add uh, in the browser is going to be interpreted as a path variable and its value is going to be automatically populated uh, in here. So when we say 300, then it's a path variable and this uh, parameter price is going to have a value of 300. And then we use this parameter to, um, to make the filtering. This was just a side note. And last but not least, let's say that we want to create a new hotel booking. Uh, in this case, we are going to use the post method. So public, and uh, just to see that it works, I'm also going to return the updated list of hotel bookings. I'll put it create. I need a request body and a hotel booking, hotel booking, oh, okay. We're going to have a request mapping with a value of uh, slash create. And now the method is going to be a post because you're going to use post in order to create a hotel booking. And normally what I want to do is I want to add this new booking to my list of hotel bookings and then return the updated list. Okay, so request body here uh, means that we're going to in, uh, initialize a JSON post request. And if we use a request body, we're instructing Spring that it should try to automatically create a hotel booking object based on the JSON that is inside the, the request. So this is how the binding works uh, between the client and the server. So let's see it in action. Uh, let's see it in action. I'm actually going to run it in debug mode. And in order to test this, I need to use um, a REST extension, which is called uh, Postman. You can download it on, uh, on, the, on, um, on the Chrome store. Okay, so I'm firing up Postman. Okay. Okay, the application is up. Okay, so I already began to work on this. So we are going to send a post request to localhost 8080 slash bookings slash create. And inside the body, uh, inside the body, we have, we will basically um, create our hotel. So let's call it um, intercontinental. Okay, so we have the price per night, the hotel name, and the number of nights. That will be sent as, uh, as a post to our server. It's not going to work this time, but it's, in, it, it, it's interesting to know why. So we're going to click send, okay? And we have an error. At this stage, basically we have an error. Now, 
um, one thing that doesn't uh, that I forgot to mention th and that it's really really important is that if you want to use um, our models uh, in a way that they can capture um, the client side request and in a way that they can be instantiated uh, with those values you need to also add a default constructor here uh, if you don't have a default constructor then spring cannot create our object based on the input that is sent via the request so it's very important to also have a default constructor for the models that you want to use there in the in, in, in post request a hotel booking and it's going to be an empty default constructor okay hotel name price per night at this stage we are going to launch our application again I'm going to booking controller I'm going to put a breakpoint here okay okay the application has started so we're going to send a request to bookings dash create with a price per night the hotel name and number of nights and we're going to send it okay so right now we hit a breakpoint and if you look at the hotel booking so we have intercontinental 203 which are exactly the same values that we get here and because we have a default constructor now spring knows how to bind those values from the http request to our object okay we have an object i don't need this anymore i'll continue and now we have the result in here um let's try let me try to make this a little bigger I don't know if I can. okay here so now we have Marriott, Ibis, Novotel, and Intercontinental. So our hotel was added to the list and displayed in here. So good, everything is working. Uh, okay, guys, so uh, that's it for this demo. Basically, we saw how we can play a little with uh, with our REST controller. We used uh, a model, a hotel booking, and um, some in-memory data. In the next episode, we are going to replace uh, the in-memory data with an actual database. So the, the, the end goal is to, um, is to use, is to store our hotel bookings in an actual database and then to perform various operations on that uh, database. That will be in the next episode. That's it for today. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching. Have a great day. Write lots of amazing code and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.